They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. All right, guys, last video, I told y'all to go down to the comment section and to let me know what videos y'all are wanting to see in the future. And I know y'all all said buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And we are going to continue to do those, but I can't do it every single week. So I think what we are going to look to do is we are going to look to try to get a little bit more creative with it. Instead, let's talk about some players that are rising extremely fast in fantasy basketball. Let's look at the past five games with some players that are kind of taking their game up to the next level. Let's look at these trends. And yeah, I, I think this is gonna be a lot more informative. Maybe this way y'all can decide, you know what, this is a player I wanna go out there and buy. Maybe this is a player that I wanna go out there and sell high. Obviously, this is gonna be a case by case scenario. But as always, go down to the comment section. Any questions you have, any suggestions that you have for the next few videos, let me know. I would love to see them. And also, go down there, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. It helps us out a ton, and I'm going to continue to try my best to get y'all a video every single day until we get to the end of the fantasy basketball playoffs. All right, but that's it. Let's go through and let's talk about some players that are heating up, some players that are rising fast. And our first guy is going to be someone that I kind of crap on all the time for fantasy basketball. I know he's fantastic in the NBA. I, I understand that he could be the face of the NBA just a few years from now. But Zion Williamson, let, let's bring him up. Over the past five games, I mean, he's been making me look ridiculous with my concerns about him in fantasy basketball. Because, yeah, I mean, he's averaging over 30 points a game, but that's not necessarily what we need to focus in on. What we need to focus in on is what Zion Williamson is doing at an elite level, and that is his field goal percentage. I mean, I, I wish we could run a historical search and look at how many players were able to average over 31 points in a five game stretch and shoot over 70% from the field, especially at this age. At, at this age, I would guarantee that it's absolutely nobody. But still, if you look at the entire player pool, I bet it's still a very small number. Zion Williamson right now, I know, I mean, defensively, he has his concerns. If you're just talking about from an NBA standpoint, personally, I'm not really going to be looking too much at defense for fantasy basketball outside of steals and blocks, just because it doesn't matter what else you're making an impact on, on the real life NBA court. If it's not going to translate over to the box scores, because box scores, only thing that matter for fantasy basketball. And with Zion, not only is he dropping 31 points a game, but his assists have slightly ticked up at the same time where he's averaging about four assists a game. And this is because Zion is operating a little bit differently in the Pelicans offense where he is seeing a little bit more screen usage at the very top of the key where Zion has to drive. And can you imagine? I mean, the type of man Zion Williamson is, just that size, if he gets a step on a defender with a screen, good luck. You can't step up and stop him with how he can move around in the air and how much force he's coming down the lane with Zion is looking like a player that we have never seen before. I will say guys, I, I mean, there are still some concerns. If we are talking about fantasy basketball, we still have the concern that Zion Williamson's not going to shoot threes. So that's never really going to change. But the main concern really is Zion Williamson and his rebounding. So if you're playing in a category league where you're getting that elite level with his field goal percentage. I think we can call Zion Williamson a difference maker, but if you're playing in a points league, I mean, right now, Zion Williamson and his rebounding is something that we need to talk about. I mean, you have a power forward on your team. What are you expecting? You're expecting eight, nine, 10, 11 blocks. I'm sorry, not blocks, rebounds. And Zion is coming in at about five and a half. So obviously that's something that we just need to bring up. Maybe I'm just looking for something to nitpick because Zion Williamson, not necessarily a player I loved in fantasy basketball in 2021 because of the rebounds, because of our concerns with his defensive numbers and him shooting the ball. But it really doesn't matter. If Zion continues to put up anything close to his 30 points per game at this incredible field goal percentage, doesn't really matter what he's doing in the other box scores because he is going to be making a difference in those points leagues. 
All right, so now let's go to our next player, someone that I advised y'all to stay away from in fantasy basketball drafts, just like Zion Williamson. But I kind of changed my tune a little bit throughout the course of the season where I was saying, you know what? Yeah, I, I didn't like his price at the end of the first round in drafts, but if you can trade for him for significantly less now that his value has fallen, I like that idea. This is going to be Devin Booker. And right now, obviously, if you drafted Devin Booker, you are not looking for a ton of rebounds. You were not looking for a ton of assists. What you were looking for were points. You were looking for Devin Booker to come out here and get you 27, 28 points per game, where at the beginning of the year, he was not providing that. But now Phoenix is on fire. And that is mainly on the back of Devin Booker scoring over 30 points per game. And not only is Booker coming through with his 30 points a game, he is surprising me with his five and a half assist, something that I was not even close to expecting from Devin Booker. And he's also giving you four and a half rebounds. So it really doesn't matter if you're playing in a points league. It doesn't matter if you're playing in a category league. Devin Booker is making a difference there. And yeah, he's playing a ton of minutes per game, but that's kind of why you draft these younger players. That's why you draft a player like Devin Booker, who I believe is only maybe 24 and he can't average 36 minutes a game and it's not necessarily going to hurt him too much in the long run so here with Devin Booker I mean I know that he's lost a ton of value from where he was at the very beginning of the year but if you can use this as an opportunity to go out there and go you know what we are seeing a change we are seeing a change in the Phoenix Suns where they are taking that next step up that a lot of people wanted to see in the bubble last season Devin Booker is becoming one of those dominant perimeter scorers I think that it's not necessarily something you need to do, but it couldn't hurt just reaching out to the Devin Booker owner and going, hey, hey, what's Booker's cost? Because if that owner maybe hasn't been paying attention over the past week, you could get a very nice deal. All right, so now let's go to our next player. And this is going to be someone that completely surprised me when we were looking at these per five game stats. And this is going to be Terry Rozier, where over his past five, I mean, he is also right up there with Devin Booker, averaging close to 30 points per game. And I know LaMelo Ball is taking that step up. And LaMelo Ball is just making the Charlotte Hornets team kind of exciting. I, I mean, he's finally providing something to watch. I, I mean, I know that nobody's ever wanted to watch Charlotte really over the past decade. But now this team's kind of interesting. I, I mean, we're looking at Rozier Well, Yeah, I mean, he's never going to come through and be a player that's seeing a ridiculous amount of assist. You were definitely not expecting him to be anywhere close to this number in his points per game of 30. And while, yeah, obviously, guys, obviously, this is not going to keep up. We cannot expect Terry to come through and average anything close to, I would say, even 26 points per game. But, yeah, he can regress, and he can still far exceed what his value is in fantasy basketball currently where maybe this 30 points per game kind of dips back down to just say 22, 23. That would be fantastic for a player that really doesn't have that much name value. And that's my favorite thing to do in fantasy basketball. My favorite thing to do in basketball is to go out there and go, okay, what is a player that's probably playing on a poor NBA franchise that not many people are paying attention to and that doesn't necessarily have the name brand value? He's not a LeBron James. He's not a Kyrie Irving. He's not a Kawhi Leonard but he is still right up there in his points per game. Someone like a Zach Levine is also someone that we could add on this list, but I just don't want to talk about Levine anymore. We talk about him every single video. The man is a stud, but here, Terry Rozier may be kind of jumping up into that Zach Levine range. Obviously nothing close to that yet, but we just have to acknowledge the fact that he is rising. So please, please, please take note. All right, so now let's go down and let's try to find our next player to talk about and someone that I really want to talk about, but I kind of have a hard time doing so just because we've talked about him maybe once a week for the past month is going to be Shea Gilgis Alexander, who continues to just be on a tear for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I know that this is a player that does have that name appeal for anybody who's been paying attention, but it's for a fantastic reason. I mean, it doesn't matter what format you're playing in. Shea Gilders-Alexander is going to be a dominant producer for your team. Well, right now, he's averaging 25 points a game over his past five. He's averaging over six and a half rebounds. That is something, I'm sorry, six and a half assists, something I was not expecting at all 
as I was expecting him to be a little bit more score first, dish it later, and also five rebounds to go along with this. So Shea Gilders Alexander, also the efficiency isn't killing you. I love what we are seeing, and this is why you go after the younger players, the players that we know are going to be able to play every game, the guys that are going to be seeing heavy minutes in their rotation like Shea is over the past five. He's averaging 34 minutes a game. I mean, we can't ignore this. 25 points a game from a player this young, and he's also having other categories to go along with it, is something we have to talk about. And I know the majority of us already have him on our fantasy basketball rosters just because he's a player I love coming into the season. I've talked about trading for him on a multitude of occasions. So yeah, Shea Gilgis Alexander, someone that I just kind of want to bring up. Okay, now our next player that we are going to bring up as someone that is rising fast and I kind of want to just hang my head here. I want to go, I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I know I told y'all to sell him at a low point a week ago. It's going to be Kristaps Porzingis. And here with Porzingis, I still stand by the fact that if you just watch the Mavericks play, it's nothing close to what you would want to see. But at the end of the day, I mean, Kristaps is averaging 23 points a game over his past five. He is averaging eight and a half rebounds. Now, I will say with Porzingis, I still don't want to go out there and buy him just because we understand that he's a little bit limited if he is not going to be playing every single game, if this is a player that we're always going to have to be worried about his injuries. I mean, you're never going to have him be viewed as that elite fantasy basketball asset. So while he's definitely trending in the correct direction, I don't want to come out here and advise you to trade for him because we know that, yeah, Porzingis is supposed to be a dominant big man in his blocks, in his three-point shots made. But if you look at the way he's shooting the three ball in Dallas right now, I mean, everything just looks so unnatural for the Dallas Mavericks where Porzingis really isn't seeing a ton of open three ball looks. I know he's taking a lot of shots, but if you're looking at where those shots are coming from, It's kind of just a sporadic where he gets the ball behind the line and it sounds like in his mind he goes, okay, we we need to be making sure that we're getting X amount of three-pointers up a game. So he just jacks one up for no reason. That's kind of what it looks like to me. So I don't want to come out here and tell you to trade for Porzingis, but I can't sit here and lie to you and say that he is not producing, that he is not rising in fantasy basketball. If you have him, I, I would look to sell just because... I would always be worried about injuries with Kristaps. And if he's not going to be coming through with 10, 11 rebounds a game at the same time, and we know that he's never going to be giving you assists the way that he moves the ball on the court, I think he's a player that we can go through, take some name brand, take some name value, and see what we can get for in trade. But yeah, let let me know what y'all think. As always, I am always willing to change my mind on some of these guys. But that's it. I hope I'll see y'all with the video tomorrow. As always, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Most importantly, we are so close to 3,000 subscribers. It would be awesome if we could try to hit that by, I I, I don't want to put a date on it. (laughs) Let's not focus in on that. But yeah, that's all I got to say. I really appreciate everyone coming out here and supporting the channel. And I will see y'all with the video tomorrow.